You were there with Harry Dunn. You were there with um, Mrs. Sicknick. Did you really think that you might be able to, for lack of a better term, talk some sense into their heads and really make a difference, get them to change their minds? No, I mean, again, like I, I really just, I went there to support Mrs. Sicknick um, as a police officer. Uh, and, you know, as an American, I went there to advocate for, uh, for this commission, uh, which I believe is necessary really to get to the root causes of January 6th. Um, I, I don't, like, I, I guess I have, like, more of a, a cynical outlook on whether or not, you know, I was going to be able to change hearts and minds. Um, but I did want them to go in there and cast their votes with the images of, you know, bo my body-worn camera footage on their minds um, when they did so. So this is what we've come to now, Mike. Um, we have reporting from New York Times, Maggie Haberman, that the former president is claiming that he is going to be reinstated by August, while his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, as I've been reported, said the coup should happen here. He's, he's walking those comments back somewhat, but as someone who almost got killed fighting this mob, are you worried that this could incite another one or something similar? Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, this is the exact type of rhetoric which re ultimately resulted in, you know, the attempted insurrection at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. You met with Congresswoman Liz Cheney, um, someone attacked for speaking the truth about the insurrection. Do you feel comfortable sharing any part of your conversation? Can you please talk to us about it? Um, yeah, I mean, again, like I We've talked before, I, I, I'm not here to, I don't endorse politicians, um, but I do endorse people. And, you know, Liz Cheney is someone who uh, early on um, has been uh, very gracious towards uh, me and my family. Uh, and I respect that. Uh, and I also respect the fact that, you know, she continues to talk the truth about what happened on January 6th, um, despite you know, losing her job. Yeah. While you were uh, on Capitol Hill talking to senators, were you, you, you were told, I'm sure, that Mitch McConnell was calling his colleagues saying to vote against the commission um, as a personal favor to him. How'd that make you feel? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't, that, I was absolutely sickened, uh, you know, here I am escorting the mother of a dead policeman uh, while she and myself advocate for, you know, the formation of a commission to investigate the circumstances which resulted in her son's death. And you have, the, uh, you know, a leader uh, on Capitol Hill who's making phone calls, asking for personal favors and doling out political capital um, to, to push for, you know, a, a no vote on, on that commission. It was absolutely disgraceful. Mm -hmm. So I've had a lot of conversations post January 6th and, and really where I've come to is that, you know, we ultimately, uh, Americans are responsible for, um, our country going forward. Uh, in a lot of cases, we can't look to our elected leaders anymore, um, we need to make a decision, a conscious decision as to, you know, what type of country do we want to live in? Um, and do we want to send people to Washington who espouse, you know, hateful, uh, vitriol rhetoric uh, and, you know, fear mongering? Or do we want people that lead with or are guided by principles like honor, integrity, uh, compassion and empathy? Um, I would prefer the latter. And I know that, you know, in the future, I'll use my vote um, to, to send people like that uh, to Washington. But it really starts with us as individuals. Um, you know, one of, one of the things that I've tried to do post January 6th is, uh, you know, every interaction that I have with, with anyone that I encounter uh, is to, you know, uh, to be compassionate and, and to have empathy. Uh, I had a really... Uh, interesting conversation with a, a reporter, uh, Peter Herman from the Washington Post the other day, and, and he was talking to me about, you know, do I have concerns about returning to policing, um, having experienced what I did, 
and does it make me an angrier person? Um, does it make me, you know, like hateful against the people that uh, that injured me at the Capitol? And I, I actually feel like it's the exact opposite. Um, I've become a much more compassionate person, uh, and I, you know, try to really just live my life uh, that way. Um, and, and I hope that, um, you know, me uh, continuing to, you know, use the platform that's been afforded to me uh, helps other people, you know, to kind of, I don't know, reimagine their relationship with, you know, with Americans, with, with their fellow countrymen. Um, I, I, this just isn't the country that I want to turn over to my children. Well, let me, you know, you mentioned the conversation you had with me. Let's talk about what we talk about. And listen, I don't know if you want to share this or not, um, but these are the conversations that we have offline, off television. When you watch these efforts to restrict the vote, I mentioned, I talked about this in the opening of the show, about the weight of what people who, you know, are standing in the way of this, what they should be feeling about people who fought and died for that right in this country, especially people of color. When you look at these efforts to restrict the vote based on the big lie, what do you see, Mike? Yeah, so, I mean, like we talked off, offline, like I, it's a little outside of my wheelhouse, but I mean, hell, I'm, I'm an American, so, you know, I'll chime in. Um, I think you know, it took us a long time to, to get to a place in a country where, you know, we respected the ideal that, you know, one man, one vote, uh, and the idea that you would want to restrict anybody's ability to, um, you know, to live that or, or to, to cast that vote is the most un-American thing imaginable. Yeah. Is that your phone ringing? Uh, it may be. <laughs> you can stop it if you want, if you can get to it. Um, so let's, let's talk about Senator Ron Johnson. Senator Ron Johnson uh, voted against the January 6th commission, but this is what he, uh, he, this is what he's saying now. Watch this. I'm doing my own personal investigation. I'd, I'd like to uh, completely reconstruct what happened on January 6th so we have an accurate historical record. Mike, I heard you let him have it when uh, you were there on the Hill. Can you share what you said? Uh, I don't know if I would characterize it as, you know, having let him have it. You gave him um, a piece of your mind. How about that? I mean, I told him what happened that day. Um, you know, again, like many of the senators, um, that I went there to advocate before for this commission, uh, I think most already had their minds made up. Um, and so, you know, there was like a lot of talk about like what type of question or, you know, what, what answers was I looking for? Um, and I, I really just saw it as a way to deflect from, you know, ultimately the, uh, you know, the goal of, a bipartisan commission, which, which, which would look into like the root causes of the January 6th insurrection. Um, again, like most of the senators there, uh, they were interested in, you know, force mobilization, like how our officers deployed that day, or they wanted to address, um, you know, physical security concerns at the Capitol. I mean, that's all like fine and dandy. Um, you know, there, there's investigations that are going on, I'm, I'm sure, that will address those factors, uh, just like there's a criminal investigation, you know, to in, investigate, you know, the individuals who, you know, committed acts of violence or destruction. Uh, but what I'm really interested in, what, what I was advocating for was, you know, a broad look into what led uh, us as a country to get to a point where you know, individuals felt that they were, uh, you know, their behavior was sanctioned to um, attack the Capitol. Yeah. You have been having conversations with the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She is promising to get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th. Are you confident that the truth w will come out? Um, I, I mean, I have... Again, like I, I have had some conversations with uh, with Speaker Pelosi. Um, I'm very confident in her abilities. I mean, she's, you know, she's pretty damn amazing. Um, again, like I said, I, I don't, you know, endorse 
politicians, but uh, I mean, she's a hell of a person. Um, and yeah, no, I, I believe that uh, that she's going to uh, going to get to the bottom of this.